Hi everyone, welcome to the second episode of my podcast Ask Bone Teacher where I answer your formal questions in an informal way. Today's question is a common question I keep getting from students, particularly the ones preparing for the Indian postgraduate medical entrance exam. The question is, sir, is it a good idea if I do anatomy before doing surgical subjects like orthopedics, general surgery, gynecology or can I do it later? And can I do well without reading anatomy as a subject for an entrance exam or in other words, can I just skip it? Well, here's the deal. Let me just put my thoughts out there and then you can take away whatever you want from it. See, anatomy is a fundamental subject. Fundamental subjects are like maps that guide you. Anatomy is literally and metaphorically like a map of the human body. You cannot do it without knowing it thoroughly or at least parts of it thoroughly. It's like knowing the address to your house. You need to be able to reach it from any part in town. It means you should be familiar with your town but not necessarily the whole city, which means you have to be familiar with the areas you are being asked about frequently in your anatomy exam. Okay, so how do you learn anatomy? Anatomy is best learnt by dissection. Dissection of cadavers is no doubt the best mode of learning gross anatomy, even today. But we all know what we have done in our dissection labs. Let's not go into details there. But long story short, we have royally wasted the time there, living in our happy bubble of cracking the PMT and getting into medical school. Okay, so what's been done is done, but what can we do to learn anatomy now? You can use medical illustrations, photographs, slides and posters of regional anatomy from the latest edition of Grey's Anatomy to Netter, any book you can pick up from the market. But you do need to have a good imagination and grasp of the terminology used to describe the anatomy. See, there are two parts to learning anatomy. First, understanding the terminology and then memorizing the names of the relevant structures. Clinically relevant structures to be precise. Now the terminology is very confusing. If you don't know what is what, you get lost quite easily quite fast. You should be well versed by the terms dorsal, ventral, proximal, distal and you should also know the planes like the coronal plane, sagittal plane, axial plane and whatnot. I see so many postgraduates still struggling with these terms. You guys are the turtles. And without a clear understanding of the terms, you are just reading a foreign language. So first fix that. The second thing is memorizing the names of the structures. These are the list of structures everywhere. The structures behind the upper one third of the sternocleidomastoid or the contents of the carotid sheath and so on and so forth. You keep memorizing these things and you forget them again and again. So I feel the best way to memorize these things is to give it a clinical significance. Like if there is a tumor in a particular area, a particular nerve will get compressed and will cause these symptoms because of its paralysis. That structure becomes relevant to that part of the anatomy. For example, in ovarian cancers, the ureters get involved and they can cause renal failure or at least that's how I remembered. You can also come up with mnemonics that can help you like the infamous she looks so pretty try to catch her wala or the one I usually tell in my class the superior gluteal nerve wala. Most of the standard books or classes you attend will teach you the relevant anatomy before going deep into the depths of the subject. For example, if you have ever attended my classes or watched my videos, you will notice that I spend a good amount of time teaching you the relevant clinical anatomy before venturing into the complex aspects. Because it feels futile to tell you the story without giving you the background story of the characters. My suggestion to make reading anatomy less painful is to integrate anatomy with radiology and imaging questions or to integrate anatomy with clinical features of certain clinical presentations of the subject that you're reading. For example, if you're reading general surgery and if there is a pathology related around liver, you should be familiar with the anatomy around liver. So as a particular symptom could present because of the manifestation of compression or loss in the blood flow to the structure around the liver. And when you keep going deeper and deeper in the subject, keep coming back to anatomy if you're ever confused thinking why something is not making sense. It's like looking at Google Maps occasionally to keep reminding yourself what is the shortest route to your home. So yeah, you don't necessarily have to do anatomy before the clinical subject if you're familiar with it or if you're sure you're understanding the concepts of surgery or orthopedics or gynecology in general. 
But if you're not, review that particular anatomy. You don't have to follow a particular order or structure while learning anatomy. Just overlap the relevant topics from clinical and radiological subjects that you're planning to read. And also remember, you cannot do without reading anatomy. You'll have to go over it in some shape or form. So if you are planning to celebrate skipping anatomy, cancel that party. Because skipping anatomy is missing on the fundamental subject. And whatever exam you appear for, you will not do well if you skip a fundamental subject. Alright guys, keep things simple and stupid. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Comment your questions below. Who knows, you might be featured in my next podcast. Bye-bye.